Hello, my name is Ronald Kim. Welcome to text sample 3 of Classical Armenian. Text sample 3 comes from the Armenian Bible. This is from the Gospel according to Luke and relates the birth of baby Jesus. Before we begin, a couple of tips for those who wish to study Classical Armenian texts on their own. Uh, whether studying the Bible translation or original classical Armenian literature, it is advisable to keep a list of the most frequently occurring forms as when learning any language. Uh, based on my own experience, I recommend keeping a list of the most common verbs, many of which, as we've seen in the video on verbal morphology, are irregular, and also a list of prepositions. We've heard about them in the videos on syntax. The prepositions can be very tricky because, as we have seen, they often occur with multiple case forms, and the meanings can vary widely. We will see some examples in these three lines here. Let's begin with line one. I've given you here the original Armenian in transcription, uh, the Greek, which was the basis for the Armenian translation, and the King James Bible in slightly old-fashioned English. Right. The King James Bible reads, And it came to pass in those days, that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Well, they're not going to correspond exactly because both of them are translated from the Greek. What do we have here? Let's begin. El eleu nda worsen nda inosik. There's a lot to unpack here. El is and, probably the first word you should learn. Eleu is aorist third singular, highly irregular, of linim later elanim, become. This is a medium tantum verb. There are no active forms. So, and it became. It happened, right? It came to pass. And, you'll notice, occurs twice. Why? Note the repetition before the demonstrative. It came to pass. It happened in, with expressions of time. Uh, with other nouns, it can have other meanings. But and plus accusative, here meaning Days, accusative plural of day, means in the days. Which days? In days, in einosik. That's accusative plural with emphatic eek of ein, that. And ein is in turn formed from i and the far datic marker n. Eis means this, eid means that, and ein means that over there. This is referring to a long time ago, right? Hence, in those days, in days, in those. And this is typical, to repeat the preposition before a demonstrative. Note that adjectives are usually inflected when they follow the noun, as in this case, but not when they precede the noun, as we've seen in the videos on syntax. We have an example here of zero complementation. There is no equivalent of the English complementizer at. So literally, it happened in days in those that, well, that what? El Haraman Yaugustos Kaisere. El is accusative third singular of uh, El Anim to go out or exit. Right? We have here a typical example of a strong aorist corresponding to a, a suffixed present. Haraman, nominative singular, the subject here, command, a decree. And this is a borrowing from Middle Northwest Iranian, compare Parthian, Faraman, right? Aramaic shows the same treatment of this fr to hara in something like haramana. And in fact, we even have this word in English uh, from Ottoman Turkish, which in turn took it from Persian, a firman, so a command, a decree. From whom? Note here that e is ambiguous. E plus locative means in or at. E plus accusative means into. E plus ablative means from. So here we can't tell because the name Augustus, Augustos, is not inflected. Why is it not inflected? Because the head of that noun phrase is the following noun, Kaiser, emperor. And here we do have the ablative singular ending, so we know it means from Augustus, the emperor. And what was that decree? What was that command? Ashkar Hagir Arnel Undamenain Tiezeres. Ashkar Hagir is a nice compound. It means literally geography. 
right? Accusative singular here because it is the object of the following verbal form, arnel. That's the infinitive meaning to do or make. So to make a geography, literally a count of all of the inhabitants, right? Uh, Ashkar Hagir is interesting also because it is composed of Ashkar, itself a borrowing from Parthian, meaning world or land, the linking vowel ah, and then gear. This is the root writing. Compare the verb garem and, in fact, modern Armenian uh, girik, book, right? So we have a compound here. The first part is of Iranian origin, and this is in turn an alone translation from Greek geographia, literally world or land writing, right? It is a, uh, an account. It is a uh, you know, it is a record of all the people living in the land. So to make a geography, to make a census, one could say in modern English, and we've already seen and, so we don't need to repeat it here, right? Um, in or onto all, uninflected because it comes first, and then tiazeras, accusative plural of tiazeric. This is yet another plurale tantum, and it means world or universe, right? So the command came from Emperor Augustus to make a record, to make a census you know, in or throughout all the world, all the lands. Ais arajin ash harhagir eleu i datawurutian asor renyai. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. Well, the construction is a little bit different in classical Armenian. Let's see. We've already mentioned ice in contrast to ein. This is I plus the near datic s, so it means this, right? Arajin is first. Etymology not entirely clear. We've already seen the noun ashkar hagir. This first census, right? Eleu, we've already seen that form, right? Happened, became, one could say took place. This first census happened. E, now we have a problem because E is ambiguous. But in this case, the only possible explanation or the only possible interpretation is that it is E plus locative, meaning in. This first census happened in, well, what? In the something of something. Of something. So we have to figure out the exact theta roles here, right? The exact semantic roles. In data tian, this is locative singular of data tun. We're familiar with the abstract suffix u tun. That leaves us with data war. Data war means governor. It's literally composed of dot law or judgment and awar bearer, right? The one who bears the law it makes sense as a name for governor. So data war governor plus u tun is literally governorship, right? In the governorship of Asorwots, genitive plural of Asori, Syrian. Note, by the way, the regular alternation of E and W. Y becomes W before O, right? So in the governorship of the Syrians, meaning he was governor of the Syrians, who? And that's our final genitive right here. Q Renii is genitive of Q Renios, this is a special subclass of ostems consisting entirely of proper names, mostly borrowings from Syriac and especially Greek. So Kyrenios is adapted from Greek Kyrenios, English Cyrenius. And so this first census happened in Cyrenius's governorship of the Syrians. We would say of Syria, as in the King James Bible. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. We know what eu means. Ertayin is an imperfect, imperfect third plural with this ending here, in, of ertam go. Ertam is an irregular verb. The air is the suppletive chogai, but the formation of the imperfect is completely regular. Why do we have an imperfect here? People were going, right, 
for a while. This is a narrative that is being related. And so they didn't all go at once, right? You have a big mass of people, all the people in the world, in the Roman Empire, going over some period of time. Hence, the imperfect is appropriate here, as it is in the Greek original. So, and they were going who? We expect a subject. Amenekian is the nominative plural of amenine. If you're wondering why the cut is in the middle of the form, the reason is that amenine was originally amen plus ein. It was a compound. So, unusually, the k marking the nominative plural is in the middle. Amenekian. Some details remain unclear there. Right. So, and all, meaning all people, right, uh, were going to what? Metanel, infinitive of metanem, go in, enter. They were going to enter, and then we expect enter into something. And this is the third <laughs> different meaning of e, because e plus accusative means into. And all people were going to enter into what? Yashhar Hagir. Notice that before a vowel, we have ya, right, as the allomorph of e. Uh, it's an interesting detail of Armenian orthography. E is written separately, but y before a vowel is written together with the following, typically a noun, right? That's just an arbitrary rule. Um, I've put a little dash there so you know that y is a separate thing, in this case, the preposition into. Right, to enter into the census, right? They're going, so they're going to enter themselves into the census. Then we have an interesting com uh, and complicated construction here. Yura kanchur kalaki. The ya is once again into. Yura kanchur, each. We know that ir means him or herself or themselves. Um, the rest of this, not entirely clear from a historical point of view, but it means each, right? So into the census, into each, or sorry, in each, kalaki. Kalaki is locative singular of an important noun. Kalak, city, ostem, so the locative singular ending is e, right? And all were going to enter themselves, right, into, uh, into the census, right, in each city. If you go back to the King James Bible, it reads, everyone into his own city. The Greek original reads, hekastos each one into, well, his or her own city. Armenian expresses it a little bit differently. There's no nominative each. It says rather, into, into each city. It's understood that that means each one into their own city. Shnor Hakulutun, thank you for your attention. This concludes our brief look at a passage from the Armenian Bible.